in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint my golden gill, bluegill pattern. Here we go. First off, what you want to do is beforehand get your white base coat and put your stenciling over. I'm using a piece of a backpack, but you can use loofah, works just fine. And then you want to take some opaque yellow and spray every bit of the bait at the bottom. And you don't have to layer it on, just kind of get it on there a little bit. Like that's fine. Clean it out real quick. Down, and you want to come in with some orange. I'm using fluorescent orange. Uh, just a normal orange works too. A little bit of that in there. And then how you want to spray this is you want to leave a little bit of yellow showing on the bottom. So what you're going to do is kind of spray from the top and make it really light down. You still kind of see the yellow down there? That's what you want. You don't want the whole thing to be orange, you want that shell, that yellow showing through down at the bottom. That is important in this pattern. You need to make sure that you have that. Next step is to take opaque green and spray the back and down a little bit, just like you did with the orange, but don't go all the way down once again. You do want to color the bait. See how that orange and yellow still kind of pops through on the bottom? That's what you want. It's all in for the effect. After that, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and heat set your bait so that when you go to touch it, it uh, doesn't, you know, paint doesn't come off. Make sure it's nice and dry. If it's not completely dry, you are going to mess up the final product. Okay, then what you want to do is you want to cut out yourself like a bluegill stencil. You don't have to put a bunch of rivets in it like I did. You can just make a rectangle line if you really wanted to, but for best luck, I'd say put the rivets in it. And mine should be in here somewhere. If not, then I'm have to go hunting for it. I found it. Okay. Like that, right there is mine. What I use on my bluegill pattern here. So what you're gonna do afterwards here, you're gonna get black. I'm using an opaque black. You could use a transparent too, because it, it shows a pretty dark and it actually gives it a little bit of a shine that I like. Uh, just I just didn't do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Put the stencil down on here where I'm comfortable with it being. And then I'm just gonna make a line. Move over, make a line. Move over, make a line, move over, make another line. I normally put about four lines in mine. Same with the other side. Just like that. Next up, you need to put black on the back. You can use an opaque black, but I highly recommend a transparent black because it gives it that shine I was talking about. And you're just gonna bring it on the back. The point is to not make it completely black, it's to just give it, darken it up pretty much. So what you wanna do is darken it up. And you'll see it's starting to get more of a realistic pattern Oh, I almost forgot. You also want to get some of this on and over the eye of the bait. Just a little bit. Not too much. All right, I get that good. A little bit more right here. All right. Next up, what you want to do is take off your stenciling. 
before, make sure before you take it completely off to heat set it. This here is an important heat set, especially on the back of the bay around the edges. Take it off and you, you want to try and rip it off all at once because if you take it off slowly, uh, there's a chance that it could smear the paint. So that's what your bluegill will look like as of right now. You're gonna come in with a little bit more of that transparent black and on this coat on the back, you just want the very back of the bait, but you're gonna darken it all the way. Like that. We come through, darken up the bill. You don't have to build the nose of the bait, just a wee bit over the eyes, like that. And then, I'm gonna clear out my airbrush. Uh, it's best to come in with a turquoise blue, uh, but I don't have a Kratex turquoise blue and I don't feel like mixing up another paint right now. So I'm gonna kinda change up my pattern a little bit. I'm gonna come in with a transparent Caribbean blue and hope it works just fine. I think it should be all right. And you're gonna put that blue right over the bill of bay. It's, especially with this transparent color, you're probably gonna have to put a couple layers of it on there. Even if you're just using an opaque, depending on what brand paint you're using. You could have to put a couple layers on there. It's coming together pretty good. Next, you want to come to the bottom of the bait with some opaque yellow, and you want to spray probably two thirds of the bait. Just like that. Hurry up, clean out the brush. This one's not that important to now especially because right after that we're gonna put some more orange in it pop into the airbrush just a little bit you're not going to be using a whole lot and then you want to come up here to the top of the bait and you want to spray some of that orange on there like that And then what you can do is you can grab a purple or anything like that. Like right here, I've got a violet, but normally I use this fluorescent raspberry. And that's what I'm going to use because I feel like it looks more natural. And what you can do is you're gonna spray it on the very tip of this. And you have to be careful with some of your fluorescent colors because especially this color, uh, it can run pretty easily. And pretty much if you don't paint, I will tell you, you don't want your paint to run, especially airbrushing because it's blowing all that air in it. If you get too much paint on there or your paint's too watery, it will 100%, yeah, 100% smear your paint all over that base and mess it up. And you do not want that. So as of right now, you may be looking at the bait like, huh, that is a pretty good bait. You must be about done. Thing is, I've got just a wee bit more to do. I like to grab this pearlized uh, pearl satin gold, pop some of that in the airbrush. And what this does is kind of covers it up. Like, I call this my golden gill pattern because I turn it gold, obviously, but let's do the entire bait in that pro state and just a light coating of it. There you are. That is the bluegill pattern I'm showing you all today. Very easy and quick. 